What? Look at this hydraulic cylinder landing gear for this thing. You want to see more of this? Guys, this is the Dancing Wing PT-17 Balsa Arf Stearman from VitGo Hobbies. I'm super excited to dig into this thing. Let's get to the unboxing. And there it is behind me, guys. This is going to be a cool unboxing. I cheated. Look, I took a, uh, a peek inside of there. Nothing is opened yet. We're going to go through this together. But let me tell you a little bit about this thing. From BitGo Hobbies, you guys need to go over there and check them out. Link down in the description below. This is a Balsa Arf plug-and-play electric version, 1600 millimeters, so just about 63 inches. This thing comes with a G60 motor, an 80 amp ESC, a 15 by 7 prop, and it has a bunch of different versions or options that you can order off of the website. I want you to go over there and check this thing out. I am already amazed at what I saw in the box and I can't wait to start to dig into this thing. They have a couple different versions available. They have an electric ARF version, which is just, you can put your own power system in it and it comes with one set of servos or you can order it in a gas version that looked like it had a little bit stronger set of servos or you can order it plug and play and drop your receiver in it. I got the drop your receiver in it version and I can't wait to check this thing out. I've probably built well over a hundred airplanes in my time, whether some are ARFs, some are stick builds, kit builds, or um, I've done some scratch building. This is a one of a kind. I've never seen a Balsa ARF come with just everything and ready to go. So I'm super excited to dig into this and share it with you guys. So let's start taking a look in this box and see what we got. So let's take a look at the box. Number one, this box comes inside of another box. So you get the double sidewall cardboard protection. On the inside, they do a nice job here of securing things. And I've seen bigger companies not do this. And you order product from them and you wind up having things smashed when it arrives. So being that this has a long transport from overseas, look at this. I mean, the big important stuff that's covered, I mean, that whole thing is moving in the inside of there. There's multiple layers of bubble wrap plus it's secured with tape to the side. And all the other small items are also taped to the sides as well to prevent that stuff from bouncing, banging around, and especially with, um, you know, balsa products that are covered poking holes because obviously you don't have any extra covering to start doing repairs right now. Um, to me, they get an A plus uh, in the packing department on this model. So let's start to remove some of these items and uh, let's see what we got. So here it looks like we have already in that bag before we start to open the packages, some hardware. We have a lot of pull pull wires, obviously for um, between the wings and stuff. We got a wood motor plate of some kind and it looks like potentially a carbon spar. This is one of the things that I saw on some other people's reviews of this plane. There are some other ones that are out there. Um, but I also saw this in the pictures. I absolutely love this. That is some really nice work on the gauge uh, panel right there. You got some nice screws. It looks like some kind of carbon is maybe what they use covering right there. And just a, a fairly nice looking cockpit design, cockpit panel design. destruction guide now this as an ARF um, I'm really kind of curious to see how much work get that tape off of the book it's probably not where we want to have that stuff stuck um, I'm really curious to see exactly how much work is going to be needed going through the instruction manual so as we start to take some quick notes and looks here, I love the color. Before we start reading to see if we're accurate or not, I love the color pictures. Um, it looks like they show you some tidbits here and some tricks on how to do things. Oh, I love this already. Look at this, robard hinges. Oh, I got plenty of stuff to show you with robard hinges and some preferences too. Can't wait to share those with you during the build. And it looks like we have 
I don't know, there's page 10, page 14. So it looks like maybe we got about 12 pages here of building. And then uh, some setup, but yep. So this ought to be pretty wild to put together. I can't wait. So 12 pages of building, that means we're gonna have some a good bit of work here to get done. Oh, servos. Oh, we got some big beefy servos here for sure. Uh, motor is in the inside of there and the ESC. Again, this was a G60 motor and an 80 amp ESC. Got our cabanes. Struts here that look nicely covered as well. Aluminum covered with, uh, looks like maybe some balsa wood or at least balsa wood with aluminum ends that are covered. Nice. Got a box of stuff here we'll throw off to the side. Nice. Got it. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? It's even logoed BitGo Hobby. What a nice uh, prop. Nice wooden 15 by 7. Got some carbon wing spars here. Oh, sweet. Guys, that's some pretty nice beefy gear in there. Oh, buddy. I didn't expect that. And they're articulating, so they're going to move. I can't wait to put some pressure on those and see how that winds up. Let me get the knife. All right, we cut the tape. So we got our plastic, uh, looks like gear covers and I don't know, spats I think is what I call them. I don't know if they have a more technical name, but uh, where that gear meets the body to make them look nice. And check this beast out, can't wait. Come on out of there. Got the fuselage. I love the color scheme in this thing, how nice that is. And we have a box. I'm pretty sure that this is going to have wings in it. So, um, I don't know, I guess upside down is good. Probably prefer another piece of cardboard on the bottom, but it works. Everything looks intact, so let's pull this out. We'll set that there. And that's it for the box. All right, so what do you say we start uh, unwrapping this stuff? All right, so with that being said, everything's laid out in the bench. Let's get to opening things. And the first thing I want to open is the fuselage and see what our thoughts are of this. Now with the tape around there, be very careful we don't cut into the plane. And again, I put down some of this uh, foam padding just to protect any time I'm working on a plane that has, whether it's fabric or the plastic type of covering, because any amount of garbage on your bench will put unsightly divots or marks in it. So really nice, very um, first initial impression. I don't see any damage, any marks, any wrinkles, any extra uh, overlaying glue. It looks like they got some really robust, these almost look like, um, I don't know, like steel mounts over ply for the landing gear. The covering is nice, literally has no wrinkles. It looks like this red line is painted on there. And around the canopy openings, they actually use like a rubber 
uh, a rubber seal like almost like they use in automotive applications we got some screws here in the side and magnetic latching for the canopy which is really nice that's really nice and secure good positive lock now the covering I can tell you has uh, a seam right down the center for the canopy it would have been nice if they would have did that in one piece but to be honest, that line, for the most part, carries all the way down through the plane. So it's not um, unsightly. It's just it matches the rest. Now this, I really wish I knew what kind of covering this was. This almost feels like a, almost feels like an aura cover. Um, downside is, you know, if you don't know what kind of covering it is, it may be a little bit difficult to match it should you poke a hole or something in it. But uh, initial impression is it's very well done. You know, again, when it comes down to covering, it is a knack. And the more of it you do, the better the job um, you do of it. And this is tight. That looks good. They have some nice metal clevis push rods on there. And it looks like they're fabric wrapped um, around some carbon. So kind of excited to get down. Yeah, when you look in the inside of this, I'll give you guys a close up. Um, but the push rods are a solid carbon square rod with fabric wicked around a metal rod and then obviously they probably coat it with ca to harden it up but pretty neat definitely pretty neat the landing gear i'm excited to get the landing gear out let's open this up see what we got in here now these will screw into the bottom um, foam tires, locking nuts on there. Yeah, they're going to definitely absorb some, some rougher landings. And they have a nice scale appearance to them. <laughs> you know what these look like? These look like the gas shocks that you have on like your um, windows and doors and stuff like that. Or hatches on your SUV type vehicles. But guys, that's pretty, that's pretty stout. That's going to absorb some <laughs> rougher landings. For sure. So those are kind of cool. And they'll thread right in there. I like that. And then we have a nice solid wire uh, tail wheel here. So pretty neat. We'll open up our dash panel. Get that out of the plastic for you to see that. And I love the gauges. They did a great job with these. And I like how they even put a spot for your switch, if you guys can see that. And then there's another one if you use like an LED uh, arming light or something can go in there. But they actually have like a plastic, a clear plastic over the gauges. That's really well done. That's a nice touch. That's an A+. Um, this box, let's see what was in the mystery box. Get rid of that. Radial engine. So, very first real plane I ever got to fly in my life, and the only one I ever got to fly. The 1942 PT-17 Stearman. I actually got to fly that thing for about 20 minutes. Loved it. Um, so, pretty neat. Very light, balsa-built housing with plastic dummy radial engines in there. So, you can spend some time dressing that up if you want to, but... Um, neat little look. Take out all these plastic wheel spats or landing gear spats. Nothing fancy here, just regular plastic. Guess this one's for the tail wheel, if I had to guess. You only got one for the landing gear legs. We have two. And then these are actually balsa constructed to go over these things. Look how nice and clean. And that fits good. Yeah, that fits awesome. Like those. Two of them. We already covered before as we were pulling it out of the box. Nice laminate cleared uh 15 by 7 wood prop electric prop it's got the nice bitgo hobby logo on there nice little touch
So this plane is not like any of the others. This is not a foam plane that you're going to get done building in a couple minutes, but I like building planes. So it gives me something to sit here and do, especially right now. Don't have much to, that I can do other than sit. So might as well sit here and do some of this stuff. So it looks like we have a, a mounting plate with, um, that's actually a carbon. Carbon fiber looks like an engine mount for the motor, motor mount. Got another piece of ply in here for something. We got uh, pull pull cables and it looks like some more plastic foamy weather stripping for something. Push rods, linkages, servo mount, carbon tube, bunch of um, little carbon. These are solid carbon brackets and wood mounts for something. Got a bunch of neat looking swivels, probably for flying wire. Got a whole bunch of clevises with uh, little twist adjusters on there for the flying wire, which will be nice. Thumb screws probably to keep on uh, the wings, which is going to be really cool. A metal steering arm in there and then all the little uh, aluminum inserts for the flying wires. So we can keep those cinched up. I'll show you crimpers for those. Hardware packet, more swivels. And it looks like we're going to have to do some control arms. Uh, I'm sorry, control horns. So we got some looks like carbon fiber control horns. Velcro. And not sure what that's going to be. So, um, now the heavy back package, heavy bag. Let's go see what we got in here. So it looks like we have some more maybe shim plates or something. Got a couple of those. This is our, it says, programmable brushless ESC. Comes with an EC5 connector on there. So we're going to change that to the AMOS uh, 150 anti-sparks that I use. And this is a ZTW 80 amp um, SBC. So there's that. Servos, these look like Metal Gear servos. And with any servos, if you want to upgrade them, you can upgrade them. But these come with some pretty big standard size, looks like Metal Gear servos. And I've seen enough of these fly now. They're obviously um, good enough for this plane. I'm sure they're not a, a high-tech end quality servo, but um, nice that they include all this stuff. Again, they give you ample equipment for this plane and that's what i wanted to test is the stuff that they give you with these products with this product the items they give you the motor the speed control the servos is it going to be good without upgrading that's the key so that's what i can't wait to see and we have one two three four of those servos we have some Got a Y harness in there. Got a couple servo extensions. A couple wood screws. And then we have the G60 motor. And this is a 410 kV uh, outrunner. So nice looking motor. We'll see how it uh, how it does for this airplane. But looks neat. Leave it at that. So what do you guys say we get into this box? Uh, first things first, we got, uh, looks like some canopy decals, decals, and um, our stars. Again, be careful way, which way you cut things. Cut up and away. Looks like our wing supports, our cabanes, maybe. A lot of carbon fiber in this. I'm impressed. A lot of, lot of carbon fiber on that strut. And then we got rubber. That looks like it's probably going to sit on the wings. So that way it helps to support those with some ball supply formers there. Pretty robust. We'll see exactly where those go. I don't know at this point. A 
And I see numbers on stuff, so obviously it's been bagged and inspected, which is nice. That means there's, you can see there at a little number, some type of quality control going on. Yeah, and the covering looks, it, it, it's tight. I don't see one wrinkle in it. It's clean around the edges. I mean, whoever built this one knows how to cover. And I would definitely venture to say they can cover better than I can, by far. The color scheme here, guys, is just, it's just amazing. I love the color choices. Again, as we take a, a look at the finish and the covering, there's, there's no wrinkles. Again, we're using those uh, Robart style hinges. One of the things that uh, I did notice on here, taking a good look at, is the gap that's left here in between the control surfaces to me wouldn't be the way I build a model. I'd like to get rid of as much of that as possible, but um, it, it's not going to be on a model like this. It's not like a 3D where you're really worried about flutter, but the gap on the top is set. Um, and this gap in here on the hinge line is maybe a little bit bigger, but it's not going to be detrimental to the model. It's just aesthetics wise. Um, but otherwise, like I said, the covering is well done and there's there's no damage to this. And we're using those uh, Robart style hinges again on uh, this surface. As we take out the verticals, we see the same thing. One of the things that I think is, is neat on here is that they went ahead and um, put all the hinges in. <laughs> sideways that keeps the surfaces from flopping around and wanting to break so you do need to turn those around and the thing that i am noticing here is i see a couple tiny little pinholes at places and it's right where there is solid wood so i'm thinking that maybe the flying wires and stuff go there um so they've already pre-marked those for you which is really cool again the covering there's no loose edges or seams along here is perfect we have some little dowel pegs made out of carbon in there. Um, one of the only things that I do see at certain spots, I do see a little bit of greening or yellowing, if you will, of this covering, where it looks like maybe the heat started to discolor that a little bit. From distance, you're never going to notice. If you get up close, you know, you can see it a little bit. And the other one is the same. Covering is uh, very well done, pre-marked with some little holes there for control surfaces. And uh, I, again, I just, I, I absolutely love um, these hinges in this model. And, you know, this is going to be the cool thing about all these hinges when I show you guys how I install these things. I have models that are 30 years old that use these style with the method I use to put them in. And they work great. They're not even loose, not even thinking about coming loose. And we have a hole in here in the elevator, which if I had to guess, this wire is going to slide in here and then into the other half. And we're going to have dual control with just um, one servo. And we are going to be using Jetty for control in this thing. And that way I can actually, um, you know, monitor battery usage and stuff. So... I don't know, as much as I want to use this ESC, I don't know if I'm going to use my Jetty, maybe I'm just going to go with something different just so I can get my telemetry values out of there, but um, we'll see how that goes. So let's dig into the wings. The wings are the wings are the cool part here. So 
So these are the shorter wings, um, obviously, because we're gonna be using this middle piece up top and those carbon rods obviously will be going in there for support. I am curious to see about ease of transport, if this model will disassemble or not. Being that I see a lot of flying wire stuff, I'm gonna say probably not um, easy to disassemble, but here on the top, the red stripe, is uh, a piece of covering material as compared to there. But the reds, they're pretty close, you know, and I'm happy with that, I'm okay with that. But the covering on here, guys, is just, I don't know what this is. I, I wanna say that this is Aura Cover, but I, I would say that this stuff is pretty uh, impeccable looking. I don't see anything loose on the edges or seams, no wrinkles, no nothing. And everything finished on the wood is nice. And then they have the carbon inserts for your rod um, for support for those wing spars. And this other upper wing panel is exactly the same. They have everything already marked where pieces are going to go into for the struts, the wood, the covering, the edges. Uh, I'm not going to be able to cover anything this well. So this is really nice. And it has that fabric-y kind of feeling to it. But... Guys, this, this covering looks really, really good on this model. All right, so let's go ahead and get these uh, lower wings out and opened up. Let's see how these things look. So these will be the ones that are hinged with ailerons. Again, covering looks really good on both sides. We have our hatch covers, which um, I don't know how they stay in there, but they stay in there. And then you could see where we're going to glue in those carbon fiber horns. But those look um, pretty good. So being that that's flat and there's no bay for the servo there, obviously we're going to have to glue blocks on here uh, with epoxy and stuff. So that's not a big deal. And then we're going to have to uh, glue these in. So there's a lot of different things here on this model that we're going to have to obviously put together. So this is not your everyday foamy that takes an hour. This is not going to be, uh, from what it looks to me, a super advanced model to put together. But if you're looking to get into the realm of balsa or arts, this looks like this may be a good start, you know, for somebody. But uh, everything looks really well done on this. I mean, for what it is, the quality seems, I, I think you're already getting a ton for the value for the price of this plane. So I am super excited to get this build started and to get this thing going. Um, like I said, I, I love building ARF models and putting things together. So a little piece of tape there. I do love uh, building models and putting stuff together. So I am excited to get this project started and uh, be able to maiden this thing and get it up in the air. So with that being said, what do you uh, say we take a close up of the fuselage? All right, so check out some of the cool stuff on the inside. First off, the canopy is held in with magnets. We have a nice carbon fiber tray in the bottom that's supported in between some hardened spars, so whatever wood they're using in there for um, those things. But we have servo cutouts into the carbon that already have pre-drilled holes there and there. We have our solid carbon push rod. Um, with that wrap thread and and that stuff takes takes a little bit of time. I mean, they did a nice job in that I mean you look at the way that they join the rubber here around those openings we have um, The paint of the stripe all the way around there and Look at those solid lugs for the landing gear. I mean those look incredibly stout What do those go down into it looks like into a a big, really thick uh, ply former that runs right across there. So lots of support in this. And this thing doesn't feel super heavy. It's very light. And for the wing spar down here, we have a nice 
um, carbon tube as well. So very well built, well built fuselage. All right, one last look over the table. Our instruction guide, our decals, our lower wings, upper wings. There you get to see that really robust landing gear. That's really cool, those little shocks. What a great idea. Motor and ESC, spats, covers, all of our flying wires and little swivel buckles, servos, cabanes, carbon fiber rods, our center section of our top wing, horizontal and vertical stabs. That's super awesome fuse. All right, let's get the building. And there you have it, guys. What were your thoughts? Mine? I'm pretty excited to get started on this build project. So if this plane should happen to have sparked your interest or you're interested to see what other Dancing Wings models are available, head on over to BitGo Hobby, www.bitgohobby.com and check out the cool selection of planes that they have. They have a uh, rather large selection of not only now the new Dancing Wing line, but also uh, some foam airplanes as well, if that is more your style. So uh, it is Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You guys are just playing crazy for watching. And if you enjoyed this unboxing, smash that thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. It helps out the channel. If you're going to hit the thumbs down for me, make sure you do that thing twice. Like, share, subscribe, and all that cool shameless stuff. With that being said, I appreciate every one of you guys uh, watching here. And I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.